Good morning and thank you for joining me for our time of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so today's psalm is Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children, we will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders of all that he has done. He has established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, who were a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's commandments, but they refused to walk according to his law. They forget what he has done and the miracles that he had shown them. In the sight of their ancestors he had worked marvels, in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it, and he made the waters stand up like a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud, and all night long with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness, and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like a river. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food that they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread to provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard this, he was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger mounted against Israel, because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven, he rained down on them manna to eat, and gave them grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels, and he sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. 
he let them fall within their camp, all around their dwellings. And they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them, and laid low the flower of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned. They did not believe in his wonders, and so he made their days vanish like a breath, and their years were in terror. When he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast towards him. They were not true to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Often he restrained his anger and did not stir up his wrath. He remembered that they are but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Today's canticle is called A Song of the Covenant. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So our New Testament reading takes off from yesterday's and comes from Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, called Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With the wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan so filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your own disposal? How is it then that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard of it. The young men came, wrapped up his body, carried him out, and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, Yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, 
how is it that you have agreed together to put the Holy Spirit of the Lord your God to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are now at the door, and they will carry you out also. Immediately she fell down and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard of these things. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. And so we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people and the work of your church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. We give you thanks, Lord, this day for your church of St. Mary's and St. James. We also thank you, Lord, for the Diocese of Southwark, for our bishops, Christopher and Jonathan. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort wholeness and peace. We pray especially today for Alison Brewster and Kim Brown. And we pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Conqueror of death, Remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your mercy and your protection. Remembering your community of faithful here, Lord. We pray for Muriel Stocker, for Debbie Rastel, for Ilsa Pelmutter, for Colin Bertwell. For Eve Pierce. For Peter and Doreen McCann. For Ken Leopard. For Ben and Tanya Clark. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>